Okay, people. So I finally was able to get around to season six of Black Mirror, right? Black Mirror. Now, I've been a big fan of this series. You know what I mean? I've been watching Black Mirror since the inception. All those years back, right? During season one, which was just whew, fantastic. Fantastic. I think what that started in 2011. Right, season two, 2013, both three see three episodes. Well, I mean, season two kind of had four because there was the Christmas special. Then we went over to Netflix, right? So we got six episodes, season three, six, season four, the interactive film Bandersnatch, season five had three. And then season six, we are nearly back to normal. We've got five episodes. As I always thought three was just not enough. You know what I mean? So it was always like, boom, okay, we got some, you know what I mean? We got a good number of episodes to deal with. So that was always a big one. But the question is, is it going to be as good, right? That's always the one. Is it going to be as good as the stuff that I loved, right? Because season five, uh, I just don't know. I wasn't fully uh, sold, right? I, I wasn't fully sold on season five. But, you know, go in with an open mind. So, Yes, season six, you had five episodes. Joan is Awful, which is directed by Ali Panqui, written by Charlie Booker. Episode two was Lock Henry, directed by Sam Miller, written by Booker. Three is Beyond the Sea, directed by John Crawley. Booker writes this one too. Then episode four is Maisie Day, directed by Ulta Buwitz, and Booker is on writing duties. Then the last episode, Demon 79, directed by Toby Haynes, and Booker co-writes this one with Bisha K. Ali. Now, an interesting thing, which I did not know at the time, right, was uh, that Booker was seeing season six as a reset of what Black Mirror, of what Black Mirror is, you know, he said that since 2011's debut, many new dystopian sci-fi programs had emerged, um, now he wanted to focus on horror and settings in the past, right? I mean, we've had past episodes as well as future, you know? But, yeah, I don't know. He said that Black Mirror should continually reinvent itself and display standalone stories, um, yeah, deliberately un upending is core assumptions, right? Which is, um, you know, fine, right? That that's, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy with that. But I did not know that going in because one of the big things about this season for me was it didn't feel like previous Black Mirror. Like, well, I say one episode did, you know, so episode um, three, Beyond the Sea, felt more like a Black Mirror episode. So I would say that the rest of it, not so much, you know, we had lost the, 
I mean, episode one has a technology lilt to it in AI. But other than that, we kind of lost the whole tech, you know, and how that can interfere with society, right? And how people can utilize it for nefarious ways, you know, or become reliant on something. So that had seemed to have gone. And I, I was a little like, oh man, that's such a shame, right? That's such a shame. Because I really enjoyed those other ones. Now, I'm happy to do other stories, but the other big thing about Black Mirror for me was the writing was always seemed to be so sharp, right? So dialed in and just like, oh, they really hit that point so well. You know, they explored that, that issue so well. And this, it didn't seem that, right? So Joan is awful. This episode... It was, I thought it was a, a kind of bizarre, right? They're, they're dealing with some things that you'd be like, okay, yes. That, you know, the whole AI thing and using like someone's likeness. Now, we know it's a thing because Bruce Willis has recently, right, sold his likeness to be able to be utilized in film and adverts and and as such which makes sense because he can't act anymore because of his illness so you're thinking okay in those things that makes sense the recent writers strike and the actors strike ai is a big factor into that you know the, the ability to write scripts to like you were hearing things that some companies wanted to scan extras Right. And then instead of having to call them in for future work, right, they would just use this scan to generate them in the backgrounds. But they're not getting paid. You know what I mean? They'll get paid for that one day and then the other days, that's it. So you can see, like, yeah, that could be problematic, you know? Uh, so this episode starred Annie Murphy as Joan Tate, um, had Selma Hayek as the TV version of Joan, had Kayla Lorette as the source version of Joan, have Avi Nish Nash as Krish, um, that was Joan's boyfriend, right, Himish Patel played the TV Krish, Rob Delaney is Mac, Ben Barnes is a TV Mac. A.O. Edebury is Sandy. Um, was that her, Joan's assistant? I think it was. Uh, Lola Adefapo is Joan's lawyer. Layla Fazard is Mona Jazidi. Daniel Vitars is Fatima. And Michael Sarah is Bate. Um, so yeah, that was it. But I thought with the thing with this episode, right? So you're dealing with the whole concept of someone's identity being used to create this show, which be like, boom, fine. But they didn't address the speed in which it happened, right? Because I Thought you were then gonna go, oh yeah, because be, and we know this happens, right? That you might say something or look at something on your phone, and suddenly you're getting those adverts, you know, come up when you're online. So we know that things we do are monitored. So you, you know, a thing I was thinking that that was gonna get explored, but it wasn't explored. So. There was nothing to go, okay, this is how they are able to duplicate her day on the TV show instantaneously. 
You know what I mean? Like instantaneously. So that was odd. But plus, a get around, right? Because she's the one that's like, oh, this is exactly. Now, she could have just told her boyfriend, well, they made that bit up for sure, because that never happened, or that never, like, no one needs to know exactly what happens, because she's the only one that would know, yes, that happened, and the people involved, but a boyfriend is not going to know any of this, so you just think there were certain ways to get out of certain situations, so it, you just got a little, it, it got kind of muddled and muddied, that's what you know, my view of, of that episode. We then go to Lock Henry, the second episode, right? So this one, we have got uh, Samuel Blenkin as Davis McCradle, uh, Mahala Herald as Pia Koreshi, uh, there's Daniel Portman as Stuart King. John Hanna as Richard King. Monica Dolan as David's uh, Davis's mother. And Gregor Firth as his dad, Kenneth. We have Ellie White as Kate Saar. And Tom Crowhurst as Ian Adia. So this one was around doing a documentary and then they discover this you know story that was close to home right about a murder that had happened in the town and this just felt like you know something looking at a murder it felt like midsummer night murders or you know, I mean just one of those kind of you know, detective shows, it, it just didn't really feel like a Black Mirror. And the actions of the people, when we see like this found footage tape of things that went down, you're just like, why would someone do that, right? If they've been killing all of these people, why are they coming out like, oh, this is the first time I've ever done it. It was very odd. And what happened to Pia? just seemed like, well, that's weird. Like, why would someone do that in the first place? Yeah, it was just kind of odd. It just felt flat, felt kind of flat, right? So the third episode, uh, Beyond the Sea, was the one that felt the most black mirrory to me. So this one stars... Um, we got Josh Hartnett as David Ross. Alden Thornton is his wife, Jessica Ross. Right? Aaron Paul is Cliff Stanfield. And Kate Mara is his wife, Lana Stanfield. Rory Culkin is Kappa. Right? So this was dealing with astronauts. So it's set in 1969, an alternate history. And you've got these astronauts on this mission. But they've also got these artificial versions of themselves on Earth. And they use this tech to put their conscious into this body that's on Earth, right? This kind of robot, this cyborg. And you're like, okay, that's interesting. But, right, you don't really know why they're in space. Right, what's the reason? What kind of pivotal mission is this? But if this is a mission that is like it needs two people and it's vital, you wouldn't just send two people, right? You'd want at least three, you'd probably send four, just think because someone could get ill, right? There's so many different things that could happen to someone, so you'd think there would be fallbacks and also you'd think there'd be more than one of these robots on earth what if that breaks wouldn't you have another one right there's so many things in this like the idea is 
fine. The idea is like, oh, interesting. But there just seem to be all of these plot holes, right? And then, yeah, the way it all goes down, you just saw it coming, right? You just saw it coming. And the conclusion, you'd be like, surely the dude's going to do something. You're not just leaving it there. It doesn't make any sense, right? Now, it could make sense if, oh, this mission saves the Earth. So that's why you there can't be any retribution or anything like that. But even so, you're thinking, nah, I, I don't care about anything else now. You know, but it was one of those things that really highlighted the acting doesn't seem as sharp, right? With the writing on the previous episode was so good, so it doesn't seem as sharp this time around, you know, which was just disappointing, right? We then episode four, Maisie Day. Now, I had no clue what that meant. <laughs> it just transpires that's the name of someone. So you're like, oh, okay. Okie dokie. So we have Zazie Beats as Bo, Clara Ruggard as Maisie Day, Danny Ramirez as Hector, Robbie Tan as Witty, James P. Reese as Duke, David. Risedale as Nathan, Corey Johnson as Clay, and Kenneth Coulthard as Dimitri Babich. Now, this one was dealing with a actress, right, who's in the public eye. You've got these paparazzis, you know, um, who Danny Ramirez, as he beats, Robbie Tan, James P. Reese. They're all kind of chasing down. But something happens, right? We see this thing happen to this actress, which then sends her into drink and spiraling. But you're just thinking, what, what's happening here? What, what's going on? Now, you're thinking, right, again, with AI and tech, that maybe that's going to be the thing. Or we're going to get these paparazzi who invade your privacy. Suddenly, you know, something turns on them, right? So their whole lives are now put online. And it's just like, yeah, you, you're doing it to someone else. But would you like it if it's done to you? Right? Something like that. But what we then get is this whole supernatural werewolf thing, which just, and that doesn't come until literally the very end. So it felt kind of forced, it, it, like the setup wasn't there. And so it just felt like this MacGuffin, right? This deuce machina that you're just like, oh, really? That's what? And then just the way it all transpires, you're just like, I just don't buy people would do that thing, right? That the photographers would stay as long as they did. There's just so many things that you're just like, that makes no sense. What? Just none. No sense. Also, on foot, we're out running on foot. No, 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 no. All right, and then um, Demon 79 is this last episode of the series. So, you know, this one, it stars uh, Anjana Vazan as Nidia Huck. Papa Esedu is Gap. Catherine Rose Morley is Vicky. David Shields is Michael Smart. Nicholas Burns is Keith Holligan. Sean Dooley is Len Fisher. Emily Farron is Susie. And Joe Evans is Tim Simons. So we have um, 
yeah, this this girl working in a shoe shop. Uh, it's set in the seventies, late seventy nine. So there's just racial tension, all of this going down. But you've got this girl. She, you know, has issues at work. She's an Indian girl. So her colleagues are just straight racist, reading National Front literature in front of her, complaining about food and just these kind of things. But we get into this whole, like, demon situation, which, again, felt very out of the blue when you're considering what has previous come from Black Mirror. But, yeah, it, it, like, the, just the writing just didn't seem as sharp, right? The conclusion just seemed all over the place. I, I was just so let down by it all. And I went back, right? I went back and I watched uh, USS Callista. And, god damn, that episode is so, so good. Because you think, right, at the start, you think that the dude is in a um, bad situation, right? You're like, oh, man, I feel so sorry for um, Jesse Plume's character. Jesse Plemons? Plemons? Yeah. His character, Robert. I, it, it feels like the rest of the company is against him. No one respects him. But then it turns, but, you know, it's a bit like um, Memento, where you feel bad for Guy Pierce's episode. But as it goes, the film goes on, you understand, actually, he's a piece of shit, right? And that was just, it was so smart. It was so smart. Right, and that's the thing I loved in the past about Black Mirror, and it's just I didn't think it was there. I didn't think it was there with season six. Now, as I said, this was before I knew that Brooker was looking at season six as a reset and trying to develop it into something else, which is fine. Right, I think maybe if you if I'd known that going in, it, you'd be looking at the episode slightly differently, right? Knowing that okay, it, there's going to be some changes, but I still think writing wise, just didn't didn't seem as dialed in as previous ones. Now you may think completely different to me. You might have loved season six, preferred it to the previous ones. I don't know, people. Like, yeah, what what were your views? Because I can tell you, one of my favorite episodes of Black Mirror is Hang the DJ. Hang the DJ, oh, my days. It, I just think it is so good. So freaking good, right? Other episodes like Archangel, really good. That's a really good episode. San Japiro, I don't know how to pronounce that one, but that loved that episode. Oh my gosh. And the way it ends, right? When the woman's just like, but I want to spend, you know that my my dead years with my husband and it's just like yo oh man boy right um shut up and dance is a really good episode but when you find out what like you know what you find out about Kenny at the end god damn I've not rewatched that episode you know what I mean? It was just like, yo, fuck that. Right? Archangel, another fantastic episode. 
you know um crocodile was like yo and who'd think the guinea pig right the guinea pig son <laughs> that was just crazy. metalheads was so fucking like dark so dark that you're like yo okay i am worried <laughs> you know what i mean i am so fucking worried man that was crazy black museum <sighs> an outstanding rigging episode that was fantastic i loved black black museum is second to hang the dj for me with all, all the other ones. white christmas was phenomenal like so they're some of my favorite episodes right so people what are yours right how did you find series six and what are some of your favorite black mirror episodes it'll be interesting to know